up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. AMA Executive Council and Government Affairs team meet with legislators. DJI objects to characterization of drones in BBC report, and the FAA places restrictions on drone flights over additional military facilities. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. Last month, the AMA Executive Council and the Government Affairs team took a trip to Washington, D.C. to advocate for the hobby drone and model aircraft community. During these meetings, the AMA emphasized their commitment to safety and education and highlighted examples of their charitable works and how flying model aircraft is a pathway to STEM-related careers. Importantly, AMA discussed the upcoming FAA rulemaking for recreational UAS and were encouraged by the positive dialogue. The FAA recognizes the importance of the model aviation community and wants to continue their long-standing partnership. Members of the Congress also pledged to support the AMA. AMA also spoke with representatives from ATC to discuss the letter of agreement process and will continue to work with them to ensure there's no disruption in your ability to fly. The AMA also learned Lance will be available for recreational operators in controlled airspaces on July 23rd and will provide more information on Lance as it becomes available. Now let's take a quick look at stories making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. Oshkosh is less than two weeks away, and while it's home to many manned aircraft innovations and marvels, it's also become a major showcase for drones, other UAV airframes, and a whole lot of autonomous flying machines. We here at Aero News Network will be there with daily reports every single day, right from the show. Don't miss out on our coverage at aero-news.net. MMC UAV is partnering with the drone maker Unique in an effort to enhance UAV products and bring the best solutions for their customers. The partnership agreement was signed by the presidents of both companies back on July 3rd. Even with a difference in target markets, the companies are cooperating in research, design, manufacturing, and marketing. Bird strike tests for aircraft are mandatory. However, there is no equivalent standard test procedure for collision with drones. In order to be able to fundamentally understand the consequences of a collision between an aircraft and a drone, the Fraunhofer Institute for High Speed Dynamics, Ernst Mach Institute EMI, is now planning to build a test bench for recreating various drone collision scenarios with complete drones. This story has nothing to do with drones, but with the bad rap UAVs sometimes get, it's funny to see a turtle take the blame for the latest airport commotion. The pilot of a Jetstar Airways airplane was getting ready to depart Australia's Gold Coast for Adelaide when the first officer noticed the creature on the pavement. The flight was delayed for four minutes to allow the turtle to move out of the plane's way. Now back to the rest of the news. DJI released an open letter expressing deep disappointment with the way drones were depicted in two televised reports by the BBC. The reports, which aired back in April and on July 1st, focus on the dangers posed by drones operating near commercial airports. The BBC reports that DJI claims the reports were based on hearsay and say the broadcaster was not true to its public charge to inform educate and entertain. DJI says it provided video footage to the producers of both reports, but that the producers used little of the provided material. Instead, DJI said the BBC focused on sensational, high-risk scenarios that were unlikely to occur and that the reports could not be construed as balanced or impartial in anyone's book. In response to the letter, the BBC defended its broadcast saying, in the wake of the crisis at Gatwick Airport last year, and the strong public interest in this, we believe our horizon investigation into the technology behind drones and whether the related UK safety measures are adequate was justified, fair, and impartial. 
DJI plans to file a formal complaint with the broadcaster. New airspace restrictions put in place by the FAA on UAS attempting to fly over national security sensitive locations go into effect today. The FAA has been cooperating with the federal partners to address concerns about malicious drone operations by using the agency's existing authority under Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 99.7, Special Security Instructions to establish the restrictions. The FAA's NOTAM FDC 8-3277 defines these special security instructions. The FAA also published NOTAM FDC 9-3332, which alerts UAS operators and others in the aviation community of this change and points to FDC 8-3277. The additional 12 restricted locations requested by the U.S. Department of Defense are Raven Rock Mountain Complex in Adams, Pennsylvania, Lake City Army Ammunition Plant in Independence, Missouri, Pine Bluff Arsenal in Whitehall, Arkansas. Thule Army Depot in Thule, Utah. Hawthorne Army Depot in Hawthorne, Nevada. Pueblo Chemical Depot in Pueblo, Colorado. Iowa Army Ammunition Plant in Middletown, Iowa. Watervliet Arsenal in Watervliet, New York. Bluegrass Army Depot in Richmond, Kentucky. Letterkenny Army Depot in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Riviana Station in Charlottesville, Virginia. And Maui Space Surveillance Site in Maui, Hawaii. And that's our show for today, everyone. As always, thanks so much for watching. And please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. And if you want more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. I'll see you right back here tomorrow for an episode of Airborne Unlimited.